Hi folks and welcome to Schick Happens. In today's Ohio Country Life vlog, we're going to talk about chickens, the cold weather, and maybe a little bit of fishing. Stick around. First thing I want to do is apologize for my last uh, Ohio Country Life vlog. I know a lot of the footage was bad, but I filmed that out in the rain and I know there was rain getting on the lens and it just wasn't quality footage. Um, and then I talk about the good quality camera that I'm using over that. Just bad timing. And <clears throat> today might not be any better. It's about nine degrees out. It's snowing. I don't know if the lens is fogging up. But anyway, I just wanted to get a vlog put together for you guys. Just recently, I put up a video on how we uh, cure and smoke bacon. And while at the end of that video I didn't have a couple slices frying in a pan with some eggs, I will try to, I don't know, do a little clip of that down the road in another video. But speaking of eggs, I would like to talk about the chickens for a little bit. About every uh, two, three months I come out here to the chicken coop and put fresh pine shavings inside the boxes. I just don't like coming out to crack eggs when they drop them. That's really about all I do in here as far as is bedding. They get up high in the roost and either go outside or peck around in the, in the pen here. And then usually once a year I come in here and clean, clean all this out with the shovel. During the winter months, well year round, but uh, this is what I feed our, our hens. We have isobrowns, by the way. Uh, they're real prolific layers, and I just think they're good all-around chickens. We usually get three, four seasons out of them, but this is what we feed them in the wintertime, strictly. Um, this high-protein uh, layer crumble. In the summertime, uh, I'll mix it with some scratch grain, and then we feed them some garden scraps, lettuce, things like that. But, this is strictly what we use in the winter. And, oh, and these run about $11 a bag here where I'm at in Northwest Ohio. I'm just wondering what a 50 pound bag of this runs your guys' way. I do have an electrical cord out here. Um, this isn't for lighting or heat in the winter time. Uh, what I use for the water dish is a heated dog water bowl. I've used them for 16 years now. I love them in the winter. They don't freeze. Chickens always got fresh water. Uh, I got several hanging waters over here in the lean-to. That's what I'll use in the spring, summer, and fall before it freezes. But my go-to for keeping these things watered is a plug-in heated water dish for dogs. They work great. Now I know a lot of my subscribers are homesteaders and have homestead channels and raise chickens. So you probably already know this, I'm not telling you anything new, but for any of you that are starting out to raise chickens, when they do start laying eggs, and they'll be small at first, but once they start get going, they're laying a good amount of eggs, don't wash them. Um, there's a protective coating when these come out of the chicken that will preserve them for quite a long time. I mean that's mother's nature's way of a of a hen laying a bunch of eggs over the course of 20-30 days until she's ready to lay on them and hatch them. So there's a big time difference between the first one she lays and a couple three weeks later the last one she lays before she gets broody and wants to hatch those things. But that protective coating, if you don't wash that off, these eggs will last in the fridge for weeks. I mean, we've, we've kept them as long as six, seven weeks in the fridge. As long as you don't wash them, they'll, uh, they'll stay fine. As soon as you wash them and you wipe that protective coating off, the, the clock starts ticking, kind of like at the store when you buy their eggs and there's a shelf life on them. And I think I read somewhere that if you coat these in mineral oil you can keep them for months and not even have to refrigerate them 
I thought I remember reading that or seeing that somewhere. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but maybe down below somebody can answer that in the comment section. Speaking of chickens, um, we like the taste of fresh farm eggs. They just, they're top notched compared to anything you can buy in the store. That's mainly why we raise them. But we always raise anywhere from 15 to 20 at a time. That's usually how many we have. And the excess eggs that we have, I sell to people at work. The wife sells them to people at work for $2 a dozen. And that pays for the feed to keep the chickens. So other than a little bit of work, our eggs are basically free when we run 15 to 20 hens. I gotta do a little bit of cleaning in here for sure. This little second uh, chicken coop or pen next to the main pen. The main reason I built this uh, quite a few years ago is about every other year we do uh, Cornish rock hens, uh, meat birds basically. They take about four or five, sometimes six weeks to go from a little chick to huge eight to 10 pound birds. If we run a batch of those this coming spring, I want to kind of fill in the process of that, how we do that, mainly for the butchering side. Um, there's a lot of people that use, uh, oh, what do you call them? Defeathers. Uh, I don't know, it looks like a dishwashing machine or a pail with a bunch of rubber paddles on them. And that's fine, I know they work. But the method we use is uh, a real warm water wax mix. And we're ready to, ready to butcher these um, after they're dispatched. We dip them in this water wax mix, pull them out, put them in a five gallon bucket of ice water, and then that wax just hardens up around that, uh, that chicken. And then once it cools, you just peel all that off like a banana. It's literally like peeling a banana. And there's no pin feathers in it. It's a super easy, very effective method for, for cleaning birds and getting all the feathers off. And we've used them for pheasant. We've used it, that method for geese. That's kind of really what I want to show. So maybe if we do do some meat birds this year, look forward to a video on that. I think you'll find it interesting. Up until recently, it's been an extremely mild winter here for Northwest Ohio. We did get uh, some cold weather and snow in early November, and then it just kind of petered out. But it is finally starting to Mother Nature, finally says, you know what, you guys need a little bit of cold weather, and boy, we got hit with some. Uh, it was 9 degrees today, got down to almost zero last night, it's supposed to be in the 20s all week, and in the single digits, uh, here for the next few days. So I'm hoping we get some ice because even though they're a little dusty, I want to get these ice fishing rods put to use. Um, the ponds I have out back have bluegill, bass, perch, and crappie in them, but there's a public lake not even a mile down the road that I know I can catch some slab crappie and real nice bluegill. And I'll tell you, uh, them pan fish out of the ice, they're tough to beat as far as taste. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Still I haven't had to plow yet with the Kubota. I'm all for plowing and this makes quick work of it, but if we don't get dumped on with a bunch of snow, I'm not going to complain either. And this thing needs to be dusted off too. Uh, this is a 28 ton log splitter. And while we don't burn wood here on our homestead, I do cut down and chop and split a lot of firewood, uh, more for bartering than anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year I traded uh, a few cords of wood for the feeder pigs. So I was pretty happy with that, but here soon I'm going to be firing this up as well. Well, thanks for joining me here today on Schick Happens on this Ohio Country Life vlog. Uh, it's not a real long vlog, but I just wanted to get one up, talk a little bit, and mainly discuss chickens. But anyway, thanks for joining me here today at Schick Happens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that like button, share it, and if you haven't already, please subscribe.